Let's get to you more now on that story. And I'm joined live from Hangzhou by CCTV Stangbo. A, bo, a final script of policy recommendations by the B20 summit has been drafted. It will be reviewed by the G20 summit. What are the suggestions and major topics of these recommendations? Well, indeed, the representatives preparing for the Business 20 or B20 summit have already finished a policy recommendation uh, report, uh, which is going to be delivered to the leaders of the G20 summit. And it is uh, report uh, offers 20 suggestions covering the areas of trade, investment, um, uh, and finance, as well as infrastructure. And uh, it, is, it, it aims to facilitate an innovative and, and, and sharing business environment. Um, uh, it is called SMART, an acronym for um, Sustainable Innovation, Massive Public uh, uh, Platform, Accessible uh, uh, Negotiation, and also the Technological Innovation. And what it does is to create a global platform where people can come together and share those ideas. Like if you want financing, then you can find the mechanism for financing. And if you have something that you really want to share with the rest of the world, and you can put that on the ma on the platform it really creates a shared environment where people can come together work together and put solutions and to technologies for the future and they also proposed this uh, electronic world trade platform a mechanism for public to private in cross-border electronic trade development plans and that is going to help the medium-sized and small-sized enterprises in China to better participate in world economy. Back to you. Well, uh, several African countries, Tangbo, have been invited to participate as guests. What do the B20 and the G20 summits, though, mean for the African continent? Well, yes, beside uh, South Africa, which is going to participate as one of the member economies of the D20, um, some African countries like Chad, Senegal, Egypt and Kenya will participate as guest countries. And they believe that the summit this time is going to um, give the 20 major economies a chance to take a closer look at Africa, where China has been investing. And they also believe that the, the tone set by China this time is an indication that China is keen in assisting emerging economies and some developing countries in Africa. Um, and also the uh, industrialization agenda adopted by Africa last year can only be achieved, they believe, with the help of China and some major developing countries. At the same time, some needs uh, of Africa and some concerns over the continent will also be addressed by uh, the uh, G20 summit. The very first one is the need for uh, sustainable and inclusive development plans for Africa. And the second one is the need for keeping lifting poverty on the continent and right now um, the innovative and sharing platform as well as the electronic world trade partner pla uh, platform uh, which was proposed by the B20 representatives if approved will surely help build a much better environmental um, business environment for them to develop the economy in the future. Back right, to you. Right, uh, Tang Bo joining us there from Hangzhou. Uh, thank you very much for your insights. Well, let's get you more perspective now on the G20 summit and the significance of that summit for the African continent. And I'm joined in our Nairobi studio by Nanjala Nyabola. She is a political analyst. I'm also joined from uh, Cairo in Egypt by Ahmed Sami from the Ahram Daily to you both. Thank you very much for being on African Live. Uh, Nanjala, I'm going to start off with you now. Uh, the world has steadily been changing and developing countries particularly have been making a global force. They've become a global force now on the global scene as well. They are decision makers as well on the global scene. How do you think that will go down at the G20 summit? I think it's a mixed bag. I think it's um, it's difficult to come out in a very um, clear position on this just because of the, the countries that have been invited on this summit uh, to this summit. I think we have seen a, res uh, a bigger presence of countries like Nigeria, like Kenya, um, Senegal on the on the global scene trying to make um, uh, impressions and economics and trade, but also in areas like peacekeeping. Um, and so, you know, the inclusion of Senegal, for example, I think is a really big indicator of what Macky Sall, President Macky Sall has been trying to do to make Senegal a global uh, presence. I think that there are s definitely some uh, concerns here because the, the G20 summit, a lot of the meetings are closed door summits. So it's going to be difficult to say with any kind of precision that this country had this impact on, on a policy outcome or a policy recommendation. 
Um, but you know, the 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 uh, it's it's interesting. I think the countries that have the African countries that have been invited to participate. I think it's interesting to see how that matches up with what they've been trying to do um, in different sectors. And I think for me particularly, Senegal is a very interesting inclusion. And um, it would be interesting to see if President Macky Sall is able to get some kind of commitments for the vision that he has articulated for the country moving forward. Well, Ahmed Sami, one of uh, th those presidents that's been invited to attend the G20 summit in China is President Fatah El Sisi. What is President El Sisi though hoping to gain from it? Yes, I uh, believe that uh, President El Sisi will move in uh, two tracks. Uh, the first one is a political track, uh, and the second one is the economical track. The political track, I think, uh, President Sisi will see the opportunity to discuss with the world leaders uh, the uh, Palestinian uh, issue and other and uh, the uh, how do we combat ter terrorism, uh, especially in the uh, in the in the region, the Arab region. Uh, for the uh, economical track, I think that he also will seize the opportunity uh, to discuss uh, uh, how to uh, bring investment to Egypt, uh, as he will uh, uh, he, uh, he will stay with the, with the, the, the leaders of the world and uh, some businessmen, uh, so uh, to promote uh, the ongoing uh, process of. Uh, uh, of uh, promoting uh, the uh, Egypt. Uh, market uh, and on the other hand uh, I think he will uh, discuss uh, the uh, economical issues with the uh, Chinese counterparts uh, President Egypt visited uh, China uh, twice uh, twice uh, last two years and uh, the pre uh, Chinese president also visited Egypt last uh, January and they have signed uh, MEOs and uh, agreements uh, and I think this uh, visit uh, will, uh, will help in implementing uh, these uh, agreements. Uh, they signed uh, many agreements in the, uh, the fields of uh, electricity power and, uh, uh, and, and transportation and uh, also uh, how to implement uh, the, uh, <coughs> the, the new capital uh, which is so called uh, the uh, uh, the capital, the administration uh, capital of the new uh, one in Egypt, right. and uh, we have already signed an agreement uh, with the Chinese counterpart uh, to implement uh, the first phase of uh, this uh, cap new capital. Right, Nyanjala, one of the big issues, though, of global concern right now is climate change. Mm -hmm. And Africa, of course, is bearing the biggest brunt of, of, of that climatic change condition. How hopeful are you, though, that you will see results from the G20 summit? To be quite, quite honest, I, I'm not extremely hopeful. And the reason why I say this is the, the focus on industry and the focus on business really takes away from the real life, the day-to-day -day impact of climate change. The biggest, peop the biggest group of people who are being affected are the pastoralists, the herders, the people who rely so much on the environment for their day-to-day -day living, who are um, the majority of the people on the continent. And you know, moving in a, in, a, in a direction that focuses on the interest of business, of industry, um, I think really makes it difficult to find a productive compromise for everybody. Um, we're seeing this right now in Kenya with the construction of the Lamu coal plant, which, um, you know, Lamu is one of the most fragile ecosystems in the country at the moment. And we're seeing this kind of um, uh, difficulty in time to find a constructive compromise between what the interests of the community and the interests of the, of the, the lives, the, the environment are really in the area and the interests of business, you know, because the coal plant is a significant investment for Kenya. It's a significant um, in terms of energy production. So um, I think it's going to be important for us to keep an eye on this and to keep, um, the, you know, there's been some moves for, to keep pressure on the countries that are attending the summit to really um, try and find the balance between protecting the interests of business and protecting the interests of the people who will be bearing the brunt. Um, we are in, 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 interested to see how the, the the movement on the Paris Agreement, on the on the COP20, um, what will come out of the summit. It's supposed to be a big push during the summit to try and get ratifications on this treaty, um, and I I, I'm, I would love to see that. But and I think we have to I think we have to have cautious optimism. I think is the best a cautious optimism yeah. from you, Nanjala. Yeah. But let's return back to Egypt for the moment. And Egypt plays a rather crucial role in peace and security in the region. Ahmed Sami, uh, to you there. What support and positions though? will Egypt be seeking from world leaders when it comes to that crucial role of peace and security going forward? And what does the G20, though, also want from Egypt? 
I think the international community uh, counts on Egypt uh, in, uh, in keeping the peace and stability in the region. Uh, I think they will ask Egypt to continue its uh, ongoing process to combating terrorism uh, in the region, uh, especially uh, ISIS and the other uh, uh, fundamental uh, uh, movements. Uh, but by the, on the other hand, I think that uh, President El Sisi will uh, revive his calls to the international community uh, to help Egypt in uh, combating terrorism. Uh, not only to uh, Egypt will uh, will, uh, will fight on behalf of the world. Uh, he asked uh, asked the world before uh, for, uh, in, uh, uh, for, uh, for for help in. Uh, in, in, in the, uh, to, to help us to uh, secure and uh, safeguard our uh, borders uh, by, uh, by uh, donating uh, us uh, or, 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 or send us uh, some logistic uh, instruments and, uh, and to sign uh, deals with other uh, countries uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, the military and uh, security uh, cooperation uh, between uh, the, uh, the, the rest of the world and Egypt because Egypt uh, suffered a lot uh, since uh, three years ago in, in combating terrorism and defending its uh, borders. Uh, Libya, uh, we have the borders with uh, Libya and uh, Gaza uh, as well. I think uh, uh, President Egypt uh, uh, will uh, try to revive uh, the, uh, the peace uh, process between the Israelis and the uh, Palestinians, uh, as he called uh, to revive this. And I think Egypt and Cairo or Sharm el-Sheikh will host uh, uh, some of uh, the meetings that uh, may be held uh, next uh, months to revive uh, the peace uh, process and to solve uh, the Palestinian issue. Right. Uh Ahmed Sami joining us there from Cairo and Nanjala Nyabola in studio to you both. Thank you.